two things. We need like a star player like Messi or Ronaldo. And uh, we need to go to the World Cup final. <laughs> That's it. I think with that, those two things happen, it's over. It's, there's no coming back from it. That's it. That's it. That's it. All right, and we are back again. Episode 50, episode 50. Big milestone for the show. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jose Tejas. I am the primary host of the show. And as always, I have a very special guest lined up for this episode. I'll tee him up with a great intro in just one sec. But guys, before I do, if you haven't done so already, I don't know what you're doing. Hit that like button down below, smash the subscribe button. We are on this mission here at Goals TV and Box to Box of making the beautiful game relatable and culturally relevant for everybody here in the U.S., everybody in North America. We can't do that without your help. So again, be sure to subscribe down below, like the video. It really does help more than you know. And as always, Box to Box presented by Goals.TV. Goals TV, where you can find your free, unlimited, fan-made footy content today. All right? Now, on to the intro. We have... My man, a fan reactions channel extraordinaire, someone who, I mean, I, I think all kinds of content have landed on his channel. He's a big Arsenal guy. I'm so excited that he's here. We have Stryka from Foot Dribbler FC on Box to Box today. Stryka, my man, how are you? I'm doing great, Jose, man. I'm doing great. Awesome, bro. Awesome, bro. Awesome. I love it. We're recording, we're recording on a Thursday. United and Sevilla kind of playing in the background. I, I'll be honest, bro. Between you and I, I love to see United lose, and so uh, that that that's going that's going on right that'd now. Be a great day. Today, that'd, <laughs> yeah. that'd, be, that'd be my day today, man. That's Absolutely, bro. Uh, me and you, me and you on the same page. I would love to see that team bow out of, yeah. of Europe, and uh, and you know, again, we're we're also recording episode fifty, so probably a special day all the way around. Especially, exactly. I love it, bro. All right, well, you already know what questions coming. Our audience already knows what questions coming. Right. Striker, who are you today, man? today pretty much i'm a i'm a big arsenal fan big uh soccer football whatever you want to call it then um uh yeah i ran uh foot footdriver.com foot dribbler fc i used to have a website called footdriver.com but that's old days but yeah foot dribbler fc man uh pretty much react to everything like football culture uh fans uh animation everything when it comes to football man so pretty much big i love it man, man. Yeah. A, a variety football streamer. I think we could both Definitely. probably comprehensively say that, man. That's awesome. I love it. And that's why you're on the show today. I think that, Thank you know, um, I, I think the interesting part about, you know, creators who focus on fan and reactions and everything that the football world can offer. Um, for me, it's always super unique to have these conversations with you guys because it, there's always like a crazy wild story of how they were brought into this game, right? Sometimes it's family. Other times they were brought into the game really late. But considering, you know, how big your fandom is for this sport, I imagine you were brought in a little bit earlier than most. But, you know, we'll talk about it. I think that's kind of where I want to start the show today. Um, I want to focus on the earliest memories you have of football. You know, I think here in North America, we're, you know, it's kind of a hodgepodge in terms of like, you know, when fans are brought into this game. Me and my family kind of started this very early on. I, I, I was born into the Barcelona fandom that I have, but there's so many friends that I have that, didn't really discover football or soccer until they were a teenager or a young adult. And that's, that's just kind of how it works out here. It's not the biggest sport just yet. Um, so I'm really kind of curious, man, walk the audience through just some of your, the earliest memories you have of football and how you became a fan. Okay. So pretty much um, I was born in Jamaica. So Jamaica is pretty much that's the number one sport of uh, football. So uh, pretty sure my early memories of uh, the 19. 19- I think 98 World Cup, right? 98 World Cup. Wow. Yeah, uh, yeah, Jamaica made it there. So, yeah, it was, it was just huge. Everything was just like the whole country. Everything just like football, football, football. Toys, candy, everything. It was just like <laughs> football, cars, everything. It's just football, man. And it's just like that's watching that here in the crowd and all that stuff. It's just like magical. It's just something just different. I was very small, but it was just like, it, it was just magic pretty much. That's what it was. I love it, bro. I love it. And so you you came from a country where football reigns supreme. And you know, not 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 too long ago, we actually had, ironically enough, another Jamaican on the on the show, Javon Turner. And um, you know, he talked a lot about how big this sport really is over there. Um, I, I really want to hear from your perspective too. I mean, if you could compare and contrast, you know, the culture of of what football or soccer is like in Jamaica versus like what it's like here in the states and maybe you know just just kind of offer the audience some differences there what what would you say the biggest differences really are it's pretty much like here you have a lot of sports you have a lot of different sports uh so but down there is pretty much uh football soccer it's like um i would say probably like 50 like 55 percent 
50 or 60 percent um uh, number one sport the second sport is cricket but cricket kind of waning up but football is definitely probably like 60 or 70 it's up there um that's that's all we play that's all we play we pretty much you ever drink those like box like box juice <laughs> yeah. We pretty much turn those into like soccer balls. It, it's just crazy. Wow. Yeah, man. It's just you can play football. The thing with football is very accessible. You don't you don't need nothing to play. Just get a ball, anything that resembles a ball, you could just use that and play, man. So um yeah, pretty much support all the European teams, pr- pretty much Premier League teams and stuff like that. So yeah, like even the World Cup, Jamaica was not in the World Cup, but like yeah, it'd be a problem if you wear like an Argentina shirt or a like a. It, 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 it's crazy, man. Like my WhatsApp group is nothing but that. Like most females, they, they don't know, they know Messi, Ronaldo. Like they don't really know it like that. But it's like that's all. That's it. That's it, man. It's just crazy. Even though Jamaica wasn't in it, it was just like that was the number one thing in Jamaica at that time. Yeah. So um, coming to the state was different, though. It's like coming to the state. It's just like uh, American football, NFL, basketball, baseball, even um, hockey. So yeah, um, different transition, man. Like when I came to the state, football it, right now is more accessible because uh, it's more YouTube, internet, all that stuff. Back then, it was like nothing like that. So you have to go to loops since it, it, it was way more difficult to really find that. Unless you watch like uh, some of the Spanish channel and stuff like that, Liga Max. That's the only only way you could watch that stuff back then is like me i don't really speak spanish spanish or understand it but like i definitely watch it because it's universal it just it and uh it. and when when did you come to the to the states it was like um mid 2000s yeah mid 2000s that's when youtube wasn't even popular then it was just like yeah very early days so for youtube and, and and just the internet in general the internet was it like in its really in its infancy like no. yeah there was no haps. There was nothing like that. So it, it was very difficult. I don't think like Twitter and stuff like that even exists. Reddit, none of that stuff really exists, man. So yeah, it was early days, man. So you really can't access none of that stuff. It was very hard unless you know what website to go to and look up that stuff. Unless you're a diehard, that's the only, that's the only way, man. So um, yeah, it was very hard. So uh, when I came to the state, pretty much transitioned to a different sport. NFL was my thing. When I came, yeah, and NFL and NBA, so yeah, and I just play Madden, just come home, just play American Madden video game all day, man. And after a while, oh my God, FIFA came. FIFA became big like the twenty tens and stuff like that. Yeah, because YouTube and all that stuff, it got big, so I started playing that. And I think that's how a lot of people I know um, got back into sports or started loving the sport because of, of the FIFA video game. So yeah. Um, it's hard, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent, bro. And I think that you know, it's it's really interesting to me because you know, I mean, my parents, uh, you know, came to this country from Mexico, but like I, I personally was born here, right? So it's yeah. you know, the internet was in its infancy back in the early two thousands. I, I always had FIFA. My first FIFA ever was ninety eight, and you mentioned how much of a bridge that game really is for a lot of fans, right? There's so yes. many fans in America who discovered the sport because of FIFA. Yeah. Um, but you came to this, you know, this country at, at, right around that time. The internet was no like like it when I say nowhere near what it is today, it was like Day and night. dial up internet was still in its earliest pretty much, days. Pretty much. You used to get those CDs and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. So so where okay, so you're trying to to obviously you're 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 getting acclimated to American sports, you're you're picking up NFL, NBA, you even picked up League I Max in terms of just keeping up with yeah. football here in this side of the world. Where does the Arsenal fandom come from? Um, I think it came from, it's like when I started playing FIFA, it's like, when I used to play, um, like, American football, like, me personally, I like, like, playing the video games, I like to get these young players and just, just mold them up into superstars. And that's what Arsenal was. You have all these young guys. You have Carlos Velas, you mm. have Nasri, you have Ramsey, you have Wilshire, you have all these young kids. And the way they play is just beautiful. My favorite color is red. Um, they had a cannon, gunners. It, it, it's it, like, say no more. Everything, man. You have <laughs> Arsene Wenger, which pretty much, he, he's a great coach, man. He's a very good coach. So it's pretty much, man, that, that's it, man. That was I, it. I love it, bro. And I mean, it, you, you said it perfectly, right? Past the young players and like everything else that the club really stands for, the, the type of football this club plays. It's, I mean, it's it's one thing to see it now, right? When And, and it's it's probably the easiest thing in the world to now say you're an Arsenal fan. But over the last decade, it really hasn't been that like you it's been tough to be an arsenal fan you know we yeah, miss europe because cons- got man we got some players that 
like the way we was making top four was never supposed to be happen. Never supposed mm-hmm. to be happening. Cause we were at Shamak and those guys, like, and we were still making top four. That's all. <laughs> Imagine if we had a squad we have right now, like we would be winning the league every year. That's crazy. But like, it, it's night and day, man. It's good to support a team that you can see the transition, the growth, not just the, because they are winning all the time. It, it doesn't really work like that. Like city fans, it's gonna <laughs> come to a point where they're not winning stuff. Cause like everybody gonna have everything they have. Everybody gonna have the money. Everybody's gonna do this. So it's just temporary, really. That's football for you, man. Something's just temporary. Yeah. And yeah. So I mean, for, form technically is always temporary, right? I mean, I think class is permanent. I think you have certain uh, superstars over time who have showed that no matter what team they play for, no matter what league they play in, they're they're yeah, always so at the top of their game. Um, but I think you're hundred percent right, man. The transition that we've we've seen, the journey of a fan, sure. I think is special when you have the ups and downs. So I'm really curious from your perspective, do you think that, well, let me ask you this. What's your impression of American fans, American football fans who support clubs like Manchester city, like United, like Real Madrid, or, or, or some of these clubs that have seen really just nothing but success. They they have a very full trophy cabinet. Um, Being from a country where, you know, football is the dominant sport when you started meeting fans here who, you know, were just fans of the biggest clubs and the, and the most successful yeah. clubs in the world, what did you think of that originally? But I, I, me personally, I think that's a cultural thing because uh, Americans support winners. America always wants to be winners. <laughs> that's how I feel. Like, even, like, remember this. Um, For example, um, the NBA team, uh, uh, San Francisco, the Warriors, Golden State Warriors. Yep, yep. They never was good, like, but, like, when they start winning, you see the jersey everywhere. New England Patriots, everywhere. It's everywhere. And once they start winning, it's gone. That's how Americans are. They, they, they support winners. So, I wasn't, I'm wasn't. i not surprised by them supporting those big teams, really. And, yeah. Um, like, most Americans, they get into the sport because of one big player. So, whatever that team, what, what that those popular play, uh, plays for, that's the team they support. So, I'm not really surprised by that. It's, it's, a, it's a cultural thing. Yeah. No, it 100% is. And I, I actually wholeheartedly agree with you. I think... It's easier, right? When you when you yeah. pick up a brand new sport, you know, you pick up a brand new sport, you haven't really like, you know, you haven't been following your whole life, maybe like some other diehard fans. It's kind of like, okay, well, I know for me, it, it was always about, and it's probably because my whole family is a Barcelona fan and we were just, yeah. we grew up watching a certain brand of football played. I use that as my motivation to, to pick my Premier League team, to pick my, my Bundesliga team. And yeah. it was at the time, right, in the early 2000s, right before the Invincibles, it was... Arsenal was just playing champagne football, right? Whereas a lot of other teams, they were good. They were winning trophies, but they kind of all looked the same. The way they played football, it, nothing really stood out. They were just physical or fast, or they fast, scored a lot of goals. And But the, the way that Arsene Wenger coached his teams and the, and the brand of football they played just stood out to me. Yeah, the and, and, was crazy. And it is, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Such, it's so attractive as a, as a brand of football. Now, again, you mentioned before, traveled through from Jamaica, big football fan you move to america you're adopting american sports along the way bro walk us through the story i walk the audience through the story of where content creation really came from because I, I, as you mentioned already earlier in this episode youtube internet none of that was a thing it was kind of the earliest days i'm sure someone had to serve as like motivation or you know give you the idea to start youtube so like like tell us where the inspiration came from and how all of that kind of unfolded Okay. So, yeah, man. Um, So, I was going to college and I was like, yeah, um, college is great. But, like, I never really wanted to work in a cubicle. Like, just do, like, <laughs> office work all day. So, I figured... Uh, bro, I bro gonna... I've been there. I've done all that, that work. Yeah. That cubicle work out of college. It sucks. Yeah, <laughs> so, I figured, like, I probably got to do something that's more independent that I'll be able to, like, travel and get some time off and all that stuff because I love to travel. So, yeah. um... Yeah, so I love video games and I love uh, football, man. So um, I decided to create a uh, uh, like a website, like a blogging website. So I bought a book and I created um, two websites. And uh, it was going good, but it was like it wasn't professional. It wasn't like professionally made. And you had to do a lot of stuff with hat scenes and all that stuff to, to be – so you could get traffic and stuff like that to your to your site. But I was getting traffic, but not a lot. So um, I figured I probably – need some help like from somebody more professional like a web designer or something like that so i, I put out a hat on uh craigslist and um i had like one response 
So I went back with the first response to like some Somali guys from like Yale or some other colleges. And so um, we met up and he told me that um, uh, he's going to help with the website. So I paid him like 150, I believe. And he said, you know what? Um, it'd be a great idea. You're kind of a little shy and everything. Um, he said he has a studio and everything. So we could meet up and make some videos uh, from his studio. And um, yeah, he said YouTube would be a great idea. And I, at the time, I'm like, no, nah, man, I, I'm not like that <laughs> outspoken guy. I, I, nah, <laughs> that's not me. That's not that's not really me. I mean, so, I feel like right now, like you're actually a pretty pretty decently spoken dude. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. but back then you just thought like nah, yeah. a blog site was the best way to go. Exactly. But I used to do some stuff on YouTube too, but it was just like off camera. Oh, like, okay. I used to make like FIFA videos and stuff like that, but that never worked out because I I just I never like um study editing or never really look into that stuff so you usually get blocked because of uh, copyright music and stuff like that so uh, it never worked out but all i had to do was just do some research and <laughs> that would have been awesome man, but something you're not really <laughs> thinking about that so um yeah uh he took the money never heard from him again <laughs> he just ran off but uh <laughs> Damn, man. We've, we've all been there, bro. We've all been, like, in, in some weird way, like, in the earliest days of the internet. It's kind of, like, it goes back to, like, I remember my parents, like, freaking out, like, the first time I ever put, like, payment information on the internet, yeah. you know? Because yeah. everybody thought the internet was a scam, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, and, like, you know, sometimes you met somebody, like, you know, the Somalia guy that you met, um, yeah. take advantage of you, man. It's just, yeah. we've all been there, bro. We've all been there. Yeah, definitely, man. So, um, yeah, yeah. The idea kind of stuck with me because I usually watch um the uh AFTV or uh, Arsenal fan TV back then. I used to watch that all the time, and all these fan fan um like like fan channels start popping up. True Jordy, all those guys. And yeah. Like, okay. 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 So um I had a camera, so I just uh start making videos, man. I first started talking about like MLS games and stuff like that, news and stuff like that. Then I had um I had two channels at the time. I had a second channel where I was doing some. Try to do some uh, video game stuff, pretty much doing a uh, match prediction. Just okay. Com- computer simulate games and stuff like that. And really, really quick, back back then you mentioned MLS stuff, right? Yeah. Um, how did that like that? This had to be the, like early days of MLS to an extent, right? Because MLS is still pretty it, it, in the grand scheme of things, right? We compare it to other leagues, it's not. It doesn't really compare a ton. Like it's getting bigger. What was it like to create content around MLS stuff back then? Uh. It, nobody really watched MLS. Like, at least then, um, that's before ATL. This was like, like 2020, 20, 2016, 17 or stuff like this. Yeah, 16, 15. Yeah. So it wasn't like a lot of interest in MLS back then. Um, this would get views, probably like 50s and 10 views and here and there. But like, I try to mix it up sometimes, like Premier League stuff, MLS stuff, and El Clasico, those games. I try to mix it up. But it wasn't really getting uh, attractions like that. But, um, Eventually, I started doing like uh, reaction videos. Hmm. So I did, I did a few reactions because I used to watch this guy called Simple Mike. He used to do like react, react to like different um, like footballers and stuff like that, um, culture groups. So I started, like, you know, that's a good idea, man. Because I, I grew, up, I, I watched like a lot of reaction videos, like Tyrell Magnus, all those guys watch fun. They react to like funny videos and stuff like that. So I'm like, yep. that's a great idea, man. Soccer reaction. It, it doesn't like, especially like you, you're doing a reaction video and it's just like everything that's surprising. You just like, everybody want that. And um, I started doing a few reaction video. Um, Four Four Tunes is like an animated cartoon about like uh, football. It's, it's, it's funny. So I started doing those and those just blew up. <laughs> it just blew up like a hundred thousand views and all that stuff like that. And I used to react to um, Ultra Group from Uruguay, Penarol. Uh, from Liga MX, all those time, and people just hit me up like, "Yo, react to my club, react to my club." Blah, blah. It's, it, it I was he- going up. I hear that a lot, bro. I yeah. hear that a lot of fan reaction channels actually get like inspiration for their next video from the fans who watch it, right? The, the people who tune in, they drop a comment like, "Hey, yeah. react to this video, react to this video, bro." What 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 was that like? I mean, is that kind of how your channel blew up? Yeah, that's how it blew up, man. That's how it blew. Up. Even right now, somebody just hit me up from like Stockholm. It's called Hamarby. Yeah, Hamarby. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hit me up to make a video for them. I was going to make a video for them anyways, but it's just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I got to do that after I finish this one. So that's, I love it. It's a great community, bro. Like, like, they just... It's just positive. Just very, very um positive environment. It's like, you go, you go to certain comment section, it's just like chaos. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just like negativity, chaos, but you don't really get that. 
Oh, you get here and there, people like, oh, you're just doing this for views. Just one or two, but you know, negativity, man. There's always those haters, but um, yeah, it, it's very positive, man. But oh, my, my channel start getting like flagged for because when you react to like footballers, a lot of the TV channels and TV companies and stuff like that, uh, just start blocking your stuff. If you look at a lot of these YouTubers, they don't they don't understand it, but they mm -hmm. react to a lot of these stuff. Their channel blew up. But after a while, you don't see them do any videos. That becomes copyright. Yeah. So my channel used to get flagged for that, and this is my like my third channel right now. So yeah. Um, so what when you say copyright? Like what specifically was it? Like was it the the music? Was it like the the footage itself that it's you were using? The footage itself. They, they'll actually take your video down. They're not even like in the comp like under the video. Um, every video I make, I have a um in the what's it called description. But yeah. In the description, I put like, yo, if you have a problem with this, email me. I'll take the video down, whatever. They'll actually tell YouTube to take the video down and just make this big deal. And if you get three strikes within like three months, your channel just deleted. Mm. So, yeah, eventually lost two channels like that. And then um, I created another channel and it was the same thing. This is like the pettiest stuff ever, man. And also, um, I started doing live stream. Back, back then, nobody was doing like live stream, like live reaction for games and stuff like that. Yeah. They used to do it for like La Liga game, the classical, and he got they, they strike my channel down because I put live stream. I, I wasn't showing the game, no, no um sound, no audio, nothing. It just strike my channel. It's just like bad luck, pretty much. It's bad luck after bad luck, man. So it was yeah. it, it is what it is. I learned from that experience, and that won't happen again. So that's pretty. So that that was. I'm kind of happy that happens because I know what to do. Because I would have have like I would have wanted to have like a billion subscribers and just lose it all like that you know what I'm saying so the, that would be that would be heartbreaking yeah. bro it, it really would I can't even imagine something that frustrating but yeah, my first time was almost a top almost a hundred million I mean a hundred thousand man and it was whatever man ah uh, yeah man to, like 20 something subscribe 20 20 something thousand same thing happened again man so oh man, right now, man. So, <laughs> yeah man, it is what it, it can't stop me man just keep going just keep going, bro. And so, look, look I, I want to talk about that piece of it all, too, because, look, after I, I can think of more than a few creators, right, where they would get, you know, if they got their channel pulled down or just multiple strikes, eventually, like, the motivation just kind of goes away, right? But you're, you're going like strong. It was like that for me for a while, though. With this channel, it was like that for a while. Like, I really uploaded did you? So, so did you wait a while before you started Foot Dribbler FC? No, I just started right after, but the motivation kind of decreased, like, after yeah. a while. But it's back now, so I'm trying to do it every often as I can, like, back on the grind pretty much. I love it, bro. I love it. And yeah, man, look, I think that, you know, guys like you, right, who saw opportunities in the earliest days, right, when live streaming wasn't the thing, when you're just yeah. live streaming your your reactions to a match that's happening live, uh, that I remember when, like, I never, I remember what, seeing one for the first time. I think, like, dude, I didn't even know that was a thing. I bet you I could yeah. do that. And now with my, with not with this channel, but I have another personal channel that I just started for this year. Um, I'm, I'm doing solely FC Dallas matches and um, just reacting to them. Because SE Dallas to me just doesn't have a massive fan base. Like it's it's yeah. pretty good, but it could so be you're, better. You're gonna be the go-to guy for everything FC Dallas now, man. You're I'm, hoping, be, I'm hoping. I'm hoping, man. That that, guy, man. that that's Especially that's ultimately those the goal. Game versus Houston, those are gonna be classic, man. Yeah, so, bro. Yeah. I'm so excited. I've already got like you know like Austin and Houston fans just like you know chirping away in my chat, and it's always a it's nice. always a good time. But nice. but yeah, man. I, I I really give a lot of credit to guys like you who didn't give up, who kept you know putting themselves out there because to me. It's, it, it paved the way for guys like me now who are just kind of starting off and trying to get into that space. But again, choosing a very niche league or a very niche club. So I, I think that's awesome, bro. So now you mentioned before, you're at, what, 5,000 plus subscribers now? Yeah. Um, so you, I mean, you're growing this channel, right? You got a ton of motivation. You're on the grind. So what, I mean, what's next for Foot Dribbler FC? I'm sure anybody can go to your channel today. We'll link it down below in the description. You can get check out all of, and it's a lot, guys. It's a lot of content that he's covered I mean, I've seen, I've seen Tifo like, like you know, reactions, right? I remember what, like you were doing this. I think it was the Shalka video, um, yeah. where you reacted to like the fans and how crazy it was when like the Tifo would change colors. And yeah, stuff like yeah, that. yeah. That, that was like I never seen that before. Oh, by the way, just got you up. Um, I'm not seeing you right now. This the screen. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. Go ahead. Um, I, I, I still see you. You're good. All right. All right. Cool. Yeah, man, that was just surprising to me because pretty much it was just changing colors. Like went from like white to like blue. And somebody told me in the comment section how they did it. They pretty much use um, it's like a white screen, and they pretty much use uh, different colors of uh, pyros in the background. 
was crazy. That was crazy. Bro, it was crazy to watch it, like, in all yeah. honesty. Like, I remember seeing it, and I was like, wow, I didn't even know this video existed. I didn't even know Schalke yeah, was doing yeah. this in the Bundesliga. Like, that's yeah, Bundesliga, actually crazy. Yeah, Bundesliga, man, they, they're different over there in Germany. It's just, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. they pretty much run their, um, they run their league. They run their team, so. The ultras, man. Power. The ultras are crazy. Yeah, bro. I mean, Europe itself is just a whole whole unique beast altogether. But either way, man, I, I think it's, you know, a ton of crazy content for you on your channel. Again, for anybody who's watching right now, we'll link that down below. But offer some context to the audience around what, I don't know what you're working on now. You mentioned the Hammer B video that's probably coming out pretty soon. But like what, right now that you're on this content grind again, what type of videos can new audience members expect moving forward from Foot Tribbler FC? So pretty much right now I'm doing like reaction video from like everybody all around the world. But eventually, once the channel start picking up, start getting more views and subscribers, uh, definitely we'll do more like football news, more live streams, uh, watch alongs and, and things like that. So definitely, uh, more of those. Yeah, bro, watch watch alongs are great. I think. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And if you if you can get someone else in there, you know, like to, to kind of banter with you and you yeah. guys watch the game together, yeah. like I think fans love that. They want yeah, to see true. that. Um, I, I feel like sometimes they're only there for the rage, you know. Like, the, like yeah, I know for for me when I watch my favorite teams, they're only there to see me get upset. That's like, true, man. that's the only reason they're in there. That's true, um, but yeah, bro, I think that you know, regardless of which direction you really go, um, I think that your your channel. I mean, five thousand subs is already kind of a dream of mine, and I think that you know you're you're growing at a pretty great rate. I think you're going to be at 10,000 and 25 and 100,000 at, at, at some point really, really soon. I think your old channel is going to be a distant memory, bro. 100%. Yeah. Um, That's how I feel too. Thank you. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. So now that we're getting, you know, somewhat close to time here, Stryka, um, I'm really kind of curious for some, you know, not hot takes essentially, but your opinion on the growth of the game here in the States. Okay. Because for me, you're really fortunate, in my opinion, to, to have come from a country where this game is everything, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not the case here, man. I remember growing up in the in the states, and and like it's you know I can never talk to my friends. We're, we're massive Barcelona fans. And on the weeks of El Clasico, I wanted to like have conversations and like banter with friends about this game, and we could never talk about it because they didn't know. They had no idea what I was talking about. They cared more about like American football, like what the NFL was doing that week. And I think it's great. I'm not you know I don't want to to drag the NFL to the mud, but it's just like to me, El Clasico is like the biggest game in the world. So. I, I, I always just i am really curious how people who have moved from other countries into this country feel about the growth of football or soccer and maybe trying to guess how big this is all going to get. I mean, you've been here for a while now. Do you think soccer can become or football can become a top three or top two sport in this country? Yeah, definitely, man. Like me personally, I think it's probably fort right now. I think it's fort right now. I think it's probably bigger than hockey right now. That's how I feel. And you, you're definitely right about that, man. Because I remember um, the Manchester Derby, like, a few years back. Yeah. Um, it happens, and it got destroyed. And I see this guy uh, wearing a, a United shirt. I'm like, bro, he didn't watch the match. You see what happened a while ago? He looked at me like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, oh, man. Like, no. Jersey, you don't even know. He's like, yo. <laughs> it's it's just it's just it's just fashion, bro. It's just yeah, fashion. It's just fashion, yeah, man. I get that a lot, man. Because I was talking to this girl one time. She had a Chelsea jersey on. I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna get her. And she like, yo, this my, I got this from my brother, man. Like, I don't know, I don't know what this is, but whatever. So, um, I do get a lot of frustration, <laughs> like um, matches going on, like crazy matches, and nobody really talks to about it. So that that's kind of crazy. But yeah, I think man. it's growing though, like in general, like the work, like the next workup is gonna be in the US. So. I think that's going to bump it up. Like, these World Cups, every time U.S. compete with these other teams around the world, it's growing, man. And the more U.S., more stars we have, like Pulisic and those guys, like, it's just going to keep growing and growing, man. And MLS, I, I think MLS has been doing a good job, like, how they market themselves, expanded. I, I'm not too big on the, on these TV deals they, they've been signing, but, like, I, yeah. I think they're, they're doing a good job um, with, the, like, every time they have an expansion team pushing it and growing it. Because, like, the one... They just had in um, St. Louis is is doing great. It's too, I, I believe they like the uh, first or second right now in the West Coast, which uh, which is just crazy. Yeah, um, yeah, one hundred percent. But <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I think it's growing though. I think it's probably a bit bigger than, than hockey right now, um, and baseball is coming for baseball soon. So um, yeah, it's one of the, the top like sports out like people watch attended sports in America right now. Probably one of the best league outside of Europe, in my opinion. 
Um, yeah, attendance wise, at least, because some, some of these these stadiums are just huge. Attendance are just huge, so um, it's growing. Um, it's growing slowly, but it's it's, it's getting there. That's all. And what and, and what's what's the one thing? And I ask this question to kind of everybody, right? Because and, and it's and, you know you can answer any way you see fit. For some people, they answer it. It's like oh, it's time, or you know maybe it's like different kinds of talent coming to the league or whatever the case may be. But I always ask folks on the show, what's the one thing that you think this country or maybe MLS, or just how Americans view this game. What's the one thing you think is missing, right? That 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 would take this game to the top. And maybe it is time. Maybe we just need to let this thing grow, and eventually it'll get there. But maybe it's something else. I don't really know. I mean, it, from your perspective, do you think there's one thing that America's really missing to take football or soccer to the top? I think two things. We need, like, a star player like Messi or Ronaldo. And, yeah, that would be uh, insane. We need to go to the World Cup final. <laughs> That's it. I Bro. think with that those two things happen, it's over. It's there's no coming back from it. That's it. Yeah, That's yeah. It. That's you it. know what's crazy? I had another guest like not too long ago say that we need to win the World Cup. Yeah, that it, go to World Cup final or win it. That, that's it. Those that happen. If that happened, it's over. There, there's no coming back. There's no coming back. Yeah, I That's agree, it. bro. I think it's crazy. I, I, and can you imagine, right, in 2026 when the World Cup yeah. gets here, could you imagine if the U.S. made it to the final and it's hosted in our country? Bro. It, it, we win it. We win it. Yeah. <laughs> We're winning. <laughs> We're winning. We're winning. Yeah, yeah, bro. It's It would be a different level of home field advantage. And then, like, I think at that point, I would love to see the fans just get – deeper bro like i want to see parents signing up their kids for soccer i want to see you know high school games get the same love that like Uh, i know in jamaica they get right like i I think yeah Yeah, it's massive right yo you can watch live stream games on youtube high school games it's crazy yeah i mean you get thousands and thousands of viewers like it's crazy how big even grassroots soccer is in other countries yet you know here nobody nobody really even cares about high school soccer it's just kind of a thing most of the stuff grassroots stuff yeah. To get better, you got to pay to get better, man. So, but yeah. with MLS, um, they have a lot of gro- um, grassroots, but it's a lot of cities, a lot of towns in America. It's only like 30 teams, 30, 28 teams, 29 teams at MLS. So, yeah, so much you could do, but definitely they need more um, funding, more money, more accessibility, and more exposure. Even the college game, all that stuff need to be exposed more. Like, we need a um, March Madness too, football, yeah. soccer, or something like that. So, yeah, man. I agree, There's a lot bro. Of work. There's a lot of work, man. And uh, I think, like, in general, it's probably just motivated by money. Like, well, the people at top, top of the um, uh, U.S. soccer is probably just money-based. Everything is money, money, money. Merchandise. I know, guys. man. But, it's the uh, worst. Yeah. Yeah, pay to play, man. All of that stuff. I think it, it all impacts like the, how big this sport gets. But I think as we continue to to just kind of again keep doing what we're doing, be consistent, right? It's growing year over year. And of course, we would all love for some things to change. How great would it be if promotion and relegation came to MLS, right? Yes. How great would it be if uh, you know America could start you know prioritizing football or soccer clubs in that way where they had to fight for their their their, their place in the league? And sure. what would that do for the drama in every season when? You know, there are teams at the bottom of the league still fighting to stay alive and, and not just fighting for playoffs, you know, way so more drama. way more drama, man. I, I remember last season, you know, still watching Everton the day that they avoided relegation, storming the field, yeah. like almost like they won crazy. the Premier League just because they avoided relegation. It's crazy. like a trophy for them. <laughs> yeah, that's, bro. That's always, that's always supposed to be, man. Yeah. I agree yeah. wholeheartedly. Um, so hey, we're, we're really close to, cl- to time here, but I have one more question for you. And it's it really has to do with, and I, I think you guys are, you know, the reggae boys are coming up in a really big way now. I mean, we all saw the 2-2, you know, Jamaica versus Mexico. Yeah. And, you know, Bobby Reed, man, that man hit one of the goals of the year probably. Yeah, um, that, was, that was good. It was, it was. So, uh, you know, and I asked this to Javon Turner when he was on the, on the podcast not too long ago. So, I mean, bro, the, the Gold Cup's coming up. You know, uh, you know, World Cup qualifying is coming up. And, of course, you know, right, um, because, you know, U.S., Mexico, and Canada are hosting, we're not going through that process. But the rest of CONCACAF really is. I mean, are you excited at all for Jamaica as a national team, what the reggae boys could do over these next few years? Um, like, you guys are pretty much there already. So I think it was like three more slots. Yeah, yeah, pretty three much, yeah. Slots. So uh, Costa Rica is a given. So if it's, it's the next two is up for top. Uh, it could be uh, Honduras, um, Jamaica, or Haiti. Yeah. yeah. So I think Jamaica definitely, you, you never know. They like Arsenal, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they should be good, though. I think they should get that fifth spot. 
or or six spot, man. I think they should be able to make it because they have a lot of quality players. And, and they, have how, new, they have a new coach now, so uh, yeah, yeah. And how would you feel being able to potentially watch them here in the states? Oh, that'd be great, man. That'd be great, but. That'd be great. I, I would love it, man. I, like U.S. and uh, Jamaica in it, man. It, it, it'd, be, it'd be crazy. It'd be crazy. Man. It'd be excited. But but um, I'm not really the, the the negative thing about the the World Cup being here is just gonna be expensive. That's that's yeah. my, my thing with that. It's just like it's just gonna be uh for those tickets, man. It's just gonna be crazy. <laughs> those tickets gonna be crazy. But I I definitely gonna try to at least uh go to a few games. Definitely. Yeah. Well, either way, I'm sure at a minimum, you're probably going to create a ton of reaction content around oh, of it. Of course, of course. I, I'll be yeah. out in the fields, man. I'll be out in the fields. <laughs> I love it, bro. I love yeah, it, bro. Man. Well, look, um, I, I think it's going to be, no matter what, that World Cup's going to be amazing, regardless of who ends up qualifying. I think, you know, just having it here in the States, it's going to be a dream come true for me. I think it's probably a dream come true for every football fan that lives stateside. Um, and even broad North America. I have some big plans to save up some money before then and go to Mexico, go to Canada, and, like, yeah. watch as many of these games as I can because I'll probably never get a chance like this in my life, you yeah, know? Yeah, definitely, so. definitely. We got we to gotta take advantage of that, man. That, that's going to be great. I think it's just going to boost everybody, man, like football content for Americans, for me, you. Uh, it's just, it's just going to put the country in spotlight, and it's just going to be a big boost, man, big boost uh, for everybody. Because you see what it did to Qatar. I yeah. It's just going to be better here. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying it. Seriously, bro. Seriously. This is a sport nation. And, like, for example, like, America, if you take, like, every, like, a, a diehard soccer fan in America, we probably want to, we're still going to be huge. You know what I'm saying? America's such a big country. That's why it's kind of get diluted by uh, other fans. But if you just group everybody, like, soccer fan, it, it'd be great. We'd There's a lot of us. So, probably, like, 50 million or more. You know what I'm saying? That's a big country. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it's yeah, bro, hundred percent. America, that's why it's not the, the the number one yet, but it's getting there, though. It's getting there. it's getting there. Yeah, man, I I love the way you put that. It's getting there, and it just needs a little bit of time. It needs some things to go our way, but over time, I think it's really going to get there yeah, in our lifetime. At least. And push it, and not just like push it to the side. I think a lot of people just push it to the side, like inferior complex. But we we just gotta we we gotta fight. We gotta fight for what we want, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. That, bro, I love that. That's a great way to end this show, man. Look, Striker, I really can't thank you enough for coming on the show today. I know, you know, technically speaking, we had some hiccups along the way, but we, you know, we we got through it. We're here. Um, I can't thank you enough for being a guest on the show today and hel- helping to tell some of your story, man. For anybody who stuck around to the end of the show, I really appreciate you. We will link Striker's channel, Foot, Foot Dribbler FC, down in the uh, description notes below. Go check that out. I'm telling you guys, there's a ton of content, probably more than a few footy videos that you've never seen before, and you get to watch Striker react to all of them. And he's bringing a ton more content to the channel. He is back on his grind. I got a feeling he's going to go from 5K to 100K in no time at all. All right, Striker, thank you so much for being on the show today, man. I really appreciate it. And guys, if if you haven't done so already, like the video down below, smash that subscribe button. We're on this mission of growing the beautiful game in North America. We can't do it without your help. And the support means more than you know. Okay? So from everybody here at Box to Box, my name is Jose Tejas. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll catch you guys next time.